Hi and welcome to Signal Part 1. My name is Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, I want to take you through um, a sequence of events that occurred uh, after the uh, first week we had with uh, Francesco Piantelli. What happened was uh, a couple of the members, Matthew and uh, Bob Higgins, uh, Matthew Vallat and Bob Higgins, they couldn't make it to the first week. And so they came as kind of like reinforcements uh, uh, when they were able to at the end of the first week. And so uh, to get them up to speed, I tried to share <laughs> what I understood at the time uh, with them. Uh, and uh, that basically happened, they arrived. And we sat around in this old farmhouse with a roaring fire off to one side and uh, I took them through uh, what, I, what I could. So I'm just going to, um, basically I was sitting at the table like this. Uh, this is an old farmhouse wooden table. And uh, Bob Higgins was sitting to my left. And I was describing to him a particular part of what uh, Franco had said. Uh, and it was, re was re with regard to um, the kind of uh, emissions we may see uh, from a reaction uh, if we actually manage to trigger it. And uh, what he drew at the time, as far as I recalled, uh, was a, a graph a little like this, which I'm going to present on the screen over here. And as you can see, uh, it, it's basically like a load of M&Ms down the bottom there. <laughs> M -M -M -M. But uh, these are little uh, quanta of energy uh, and it's something to do with the resolution of the uh, equipment that you're using to um, see these quanta that gives it this kind of curved shape but uh, they're almost like discrete quanta but he says you don't see the discrete quanta. Uh, uh, they kind of all add up and, and you end up with a, a kind of smooth curve. That's at least what he said. And so I was describing this to uh, uh, Bob Higgins here, and he said, well, you know, that just sounds like Bromstrahling radiation. And I thought, okay, what's that? I mean, that was the first time in my life I had ever heard the term Bromstrahling radiation. The second time I heard it was when we were sharing the, the, the chart with uh, Matthew and, and, and uh, Bob Higgins after uh, Echo had made it uh, on the night of the 16th into the 17th. And uh, he said, well, this looks like Bromstrahling. And then Matthew shared it with uh, some of his associates that had formerly worked at the French Nuclear Authority. And they said, this looks like Bromstrahling radiation. So. I won't go into too much detail about what it is, but I'll just do enough to get across the concept of what I want to share with you today. So this is how it's spelt. Uh, it's clearly a German word, or at least uh, it looks like it. Uh, Bremstrahlung. Strahlung. I'm probably getting that wrong, but anyway. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, it is, if you trans translate that into English, it's breaking radiation. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, uh, in this uh, animation we have here, uh, you have uh, an incoming uh, electron uh, which has some kinetic energy. And uh, it, the electron, depending on how it hits uh, or interacts with a, a heavy nucleus, it can come any kind of distance towards the nucleus. Um, you know, it's a, it's a probability thing based on where it's coming from, its angle and then the, the size of the nucleus and its position and so on. So if it comes in, you know, and it's quite far away from the nucleus, what happens is in Bromstrahlung radiation, you have an interaction between the negative electron and, and the, the, the nucleus, uh, the kind of uh, protons or whatever in the nucleus. It doesn't really get affected so much by the, the electrons. It's a scale thing. And, um, and so as it's coming in, if it's coming all the way out here, maybe you get some IR photons coming out. And what's going on here is the breaking of the, the, the electron is uh, um, there's got to be energy conservation. And so energy uh, 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 is released in the form of a photon. 
Uh, and as you can see, as you, as you kind of get closer to the nucleus, and depending on the energy of the incident uh, electron, um, the kinetic energy, the, the more it gets braked, the higher uh, uh, the energy of the emitted photon. So UV, uh, EUV, and X-rays here. So uh, what you're seeing a range of photons. The, the maximum energy of the photon that can come out is the kinetic energy of the electron that's uh, 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 coming into the influence of uh, the large nuclei. So essentially this is, uh, according to uh, Piantelli, one part of the process, but it isn't the process that I want to really discuss today. Uh, and that is, um, uh, it, this is, it, it's a similar kind of concept, uh, but essentially what you're looking at here uh, on, on the chart is this is the protide, the H minus. Uh, and in a future video I will discuss why, uh, how uh, it, it can be captured uh, into the uh, nickel or, or another transition metal. But for this uh, video I just want to uh, focus on what's happening after it's been captured. So we've got our two electrons here. Uh, this is step one, this isn't the symbol for an electron, this is our electron, and it, they're in their distribution going around the, the proton, which is our, uh, the nucleus of our uh, hydrogen atom. Okay, so this is standard protide, or H-. minus. And then what's happening as it comes uh, and collapses down towards the, the heavy nucleus uh, uh, of nickel, is uh, the, the electrons are effectively Braked in a, a similar way to Bramstrahlung radiation, at least that's how I con conceptualize it. And as they're doing that, they are emitting photons. Okay, and depending on the rate of, uh, of collapse or, or uh, you know, a, a whole range of other factors, um, this can go faster or slower, I should imagine, uh, as it's collapsing towards the nucleus. And and, and the collapsing pro process is part and parcel of it being able to get close to the nucleus. Okay, so uh, step three here, we've done, we've done some photons in step two, and it's coming back, and uh, in step three we're seeing some uh, more high energy, uh, or energy photons coming out here. Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, doesn't this sound a little bit like uh, Randall Mill's uh, hydrogen, like uh, shrinking hydrogen? Um, Let's first uh, talk about how this would uh, be seen in our spectrum. So in our spectrum here, you can see uh, you've got this uh, high peak up here and all the way down here, this broad band of um, uh, different energies. What's essentially going on here, if we go back to our breaking slide, um, when you uh, have a photon that comes in, depending on how much energy it loses, uh, the exiting, uh, sorry, the electron, how much energy it loses due to breaking in, in a photon, the re residual energy of the uh, residual kinetic energy of the uh, electron can go on to be lost in further Bremsstrahlung radiation in other uh, heavy nuclei. And so essentially what this means is that the majority of your uh, emissions will be up here and maybe somewhere up here <laughs> in very low uh, energy quanta or much lower than this rather not such low but lower energy quanta um, uh, photons uh, than than these ones are because we, we're limited by the window on our uh, sodium iodide uh, scintillator so uh, that, that's our cutoff so more electrons will have residual kinetic energy and through Bremsstrahlung radiation those with con residual kinetic energy will get smaller and smaller and smaller photons and that pushes it down here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where we were before. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so what are we looking at? Well, on this slide uh, we are looking at fractional hydrogen, and this is off Chava Energy site. There's a link on this slide, and this presentation will be available uh, uh, in the uh, links for uh, this video. 
and it, it was first put forward, I think, by uh, Carolyn and Carolyn Bourgeois, uh, then Mills and Piantelli uh, from different angles um, uh, were looking at this process. And essentially, what they're saying is that, th that there is a normal ground state here uh, of uh, atomic hydrogen. But actually, they demonstrated that there are much lower ground states um, uh, than is ordinarily assumed to be the, the, the ground state of hydrogen. And what this allows is the emission of uh, multiples of 27.2 electron volts up to 255 uh, point, well, 255 kilo electron volts, effectively. Okay. So that's that's interesting. So I asked Bob to get Bob Higgins to go away, and uh, you know asked asked him uh, how much of the energy uh, spectra uh, that we saw in seven was below this two hundred and fifty five keV. Well, he came back with a figure of ninety three point nine eight percent, basically ninety four percent. Now this is consistent with. And I know you're not going to like this, Defcalian Green Technologies uh, claimed that they didn't see anything above 300. Uh, certainly, the vast majority that we saw in our signal, and bearing in mind, Bremsstrahlung radiation would suggest that the vast majority of, of, of the photons would be bunched up at the lower end. You can imagine then that the, there's a, a very large chunk of uh, photons that we're not seeing because we can't see them. And it might be much, much more than 94% of the energy is below 255 uh, uh, keV. So, is it 99%? What is the bit that's above? Now, we'll come on to that in, 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 in a later video, and I'll, I'll put forward some, some ideas uh, where that might be coming from. And I'm not saying that all of the, the uh, energy we are seeing uh, the, the photon energies we're seeing is coming from this process of the shrinking hydrogen. But uh, th there are other processes that uh, Piantelli refers to, and those are things like Alger electrons. So as you can see, there's some correlation between uh, Piantelli and Mills in, in terms of a shrinking hydrogen. The, the nature of those the hydrogen in the case of Piantelli is that it's actually protide H minus, and the mechanism of loss of energy uh, is, you know, different between the two. And uh, this is something that I'm sure you guys are going to really debate uh, over the uh, coming uh, weeks. Um, however, this is what I was told. This is my level of understanding of of this part of the process, and uh, having. Uh, gone through uh, a lot of this thinking uh, since we saw what we call signal uh, in the uh, data from Glowstick 5.2. I thought uh, the week before last I should probably go and, and look at some of my notes from the visit to Piantelli and I came across this drawing that I made. So, there we have it. We have come something that looks a bit like Bremsstrahlung. I don't know what's going on, on the left. Did I really mean that? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, here we go. Something that looks a bit like Bremsstrahlung, and I've written X rays there. So, that concludes the reveal for this video. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to come check out our site or to look into the data, the links will be available in the description for the video. So thank you for joining me in this video. I hope that you will uh, take away this information and see how it fits into the rest of the potential uh, stimulation going on in the uh, reactor. And uh, think about how this, this uh, emission of photons uh, may saturate um, uh, and maybe st stimulate uh, Alger electrons and other Brumstrahlung radiation and, and kinetic electrons uh, throughout the reactor uh, and how that might play out uh, in this initial process uh, uh, which we saw as turn on in signal 7. Thank you.